And uh, Chris is here to tell us how he actually survived all that. And the amazing thing is about the footage. It's all recorded on these dives anyway, so the material is there and you provide the story. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's, uh, it's one of those rare occasions, I think, for, certainly for the documentary makers, where they had the, the raw and original footage, which is quite harrowing, most of it, to watch, but um, also the protagonist willing to talk about it. Well, well ha yeah, and lucky mm. to have you to, uh, yeah, to tell absolutely. the tale. I mean, I, honestly, Chris, when I was reading about you, it was literally making my palms sweat. It does mine, yeah. yeah. It, it's so <laughs> terrifying. So this was in um, 2012. Yes. Um, you're a saturation diver, so you go down from the ship in the bell, Yes. with your two dive colleagues, and you live in this bell so they can bring you up and down. Yeah, we live in a, actually live in a chamber on the ship. There's, there's 12 of us living there, and we work in teams of three and sort of rotate to do six hours. And that's on to stop you yeah. getting the bends going up and down, I presume? Yeah, it's just because, uh, yeah, because of the depth we work at, it would yeah. take four, or it does yeah. take four or five days to, to decompress. Yeah. So um, that's obviously not feasible on a daily basis. So. so you've gone down to do a regular job, mm. um, and then what happened? You went out of the the bell with your colleague Dave. So yeah. what, what happened? When did it all start going wrong? Well, it was, as you say, it was very much a, a, another day at the office, really. It was quite a, a normal day. And um, the first inkling we had that something was going wrong was um, we heard an alarm really over our... We have an earpiece which gives us a constant line of communication up to um, uh, our diving supervisor. But that's not an unusual thing to hear. But um, subsequently, he, he was then started asking us to leave the structure with um, some degree of urgency. And you could just tell from the, the tone of his voice... The weather was serious, wasn't yeah. great, was it? But you said it wasn't considered dangerous, but it wasn't the best weather. So the yeah. ship was getting kind of knocked quite Absolutely, yeah. It was a, I mean, it was certainly a, a factor on the day in terms of what happened, but that wasn't the, the reason, that wasn't the cause. But, yeah, we had probably, a, we think, maybe about a 35-knot wind and, yeah. um, you know, maybe six metres of sea. So, yeah, rough, but not, un, not yeah. undivable. OK, say. so the, the order's given to abort the dive, mm. uh, and you're making your way, what, back into this bell? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, so the, essentially the ship above us um, has a computer system which holds it in one place. Yeah. And that had a sort of a catastrophic failure and uh, exacerbated by the wind had, had started moving away in an uncontrolled fashion. And that was dragging us because we're connected to all of this by an umbilical, which is literally what it says. Right. It gives us gas. And, and here's where we get to the title of the documentary. <laughs> yeah. And this is the bit that makes you go, <gasps> because the film is called Last Breath. Mm. So your umbilical cord is snagged or snapped or yeah, both, whatever yeah, happens. Yeah. <laughs> when or how quickly were you aware that this could be your last breath? I knew I was in trouble as soon as my umbilical snagged. Um, I knew this was going to be life-threatening, but, um, yeah, once it had snapped and uh, you, have a, you carry an emergency supply of gas on your back, which only lasts five minutes at that depth, um, I knew I was in very serious trouble there. But once I'd sort of recovered and stopped panicking and, uh, and it dawned on me that the diving bell wasn't there, there was no route to safety, there was essentially no way of saving myself. Dave, Dave had tried to grab you, hadn't yeah. he? Yeah, he, he was away dragged away, you. exactly. So Dave had got very close to being able to help me, but unfortunately, yeah, he was sort of dragged away a bit so like So did a... you see... I mean, that must have been mm. a scary moment because he's literally... The light on his helmet is just disappears into the blackness. Yeah, we had a sort of a, an eyeball-to-eyeball -eyeball moment, if you like, <gasps> yeah, which was... Um, yeah, and exactly as you say, he was dragged away by 8,000 tonnes of boat and... Mm. Uh, flailing and just disappeared into the darkness, never to see each other again, sort of thing, yes. Yeah, so. Well, the idea then that that darkness and you two not seeing each other goes on for 30 plus minutes. Yeah, so, um, yeah, as I said, the, the gas I had probably lasted about five minutes, but um, which was sort of five pretty dark minutes on the bottom there, we have a, a bit of time to contemplate what felt like my impending oh, death, really. Yeah. Unless, unless then, you've made a then, pact with the devil yeah. <laughs> or unless you're superhuman, mm. how did you do without oxygen for 30 minutes? I don't really know, is the truth. 30 minutes yeah. is a very long time when, especially for those on the... You know, my colleagues on the boat who had to sit and watch that in real time for 30 minutes. I think I'm it, assuming they yeah. thought you were dead at that point. Yeah, I, I think in many ways it was more harrowing for, for them than it was for, for me and, and those of us involved because... Um, yeah, it was a sort of colleague and hopefully a friend <laughs> yeah. uh, dying, yeah, whereas we sort of strangely had the euphoria of, of coming through it, but I think some of them well, have perhaps well, suffered more than we have. I know, and obviously, as a result, a bond, a very, very special bond that will now last you throughout your whole life. Mm. But what is it like for you? You're unaware, but you're looking at that footage now. What, what, is, what does that feel like? What does that feel like for your wife, Morag? Yeah, I feel strangely disassociated from it. Uh, it's, you know, I sort of am the same as everyone else. I wonder how the film's going to end. But, um, yeah, for Morag, I think much harder. It's much harder for those at home in, in that circumstance anyway when you're going away to do what is 
you know, uh, has uh, a, a job with an element of danger in it, I guess. But that, that line of being able to say, uh, you know, it's all very well regulated, we're going to be perfectly safe, nothing mm. will happen, doesn't really, doesn't really wash anymore. So she's, she's been a fantastic support, but, yeah, it's undoubtedly but, difficult. And amazingly, you went back to work, back to the same sort of diving, three weeks later. Yeah, I, well, I can't really do anything else, unfortunately. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think for us it was a case of we, we needed to get back on the bike and I think if we hadn't done it then we perhaps never have done it. But we went back as a three the, with Dave and Duncan alongside me. And they think that, that, I mean, Eamon said, you're like a medical miracle because <laughs> even the, the, the most you know, highly qualified experts in this field yeah. really say they don't honestly know how you survive. They think possibly because it was so cold... That that might the cold definitely it. stretched it out, I think, but I think uh, also my tissues were saturated with this, with the high concentration of oxygen we breathe, so my, mm. my organs and so on found the way to, to not die, effectively. I mean, that, uh, and no, no yeah, brain well, damage? It. Yeah, it's, 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 have... not just, it's not just surviving that was miraculous, yeah. it was surviving relatively unscathed, anyway. well, no, one's, no one's been brave enough to there, tell me otherwise. You know? There are <laughs> so many interesting points to all of this, and uh, what Chris does, he's called what's called a saturation diver or sat diver, he lives inside a chamber. It's not just that dive that's involved mm. there. Um, on the surface for a month at a time. It's a decompression tank, mm. yeah? And then when he actually gets <laughs> cold, so he's ready, they're all ready, they're conditioned to, to dive. And in that film, you actually hear the cord breaking, yeah? Mm. And that's why it's called last breath. So you hear the, the sound the of the snapper. umbilical cord breaking. Oh, yeah, like a Chris. shotgun it was, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Amazing stuff. It Thank you. Amazing. Thank you, Chris Lemons. He's lived to tell the tale. <laughs> um, it's on Amazon, it's on iTunes, uh, and uh, it's in cinemas and, cinemas, and on yeah. demand as well. So you can download that or go along to watch. Amazing story. So well glad done. that you Thanks for here yeah, to tell the tale. Thank you, oh, Thank Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Cheers. What was more nerve-wracking, the dive or sitting here on that couch? <laughs> it's a close, it's a close <laughs> second. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. <laughs>